You truly have not experienced Omani hospitality till you have tried this, a classic Eid dish that Omanis and myself have been making for years. Welcome to Dine and Discover, because today I'm teaching you how to make Omani shua. To begin with, we need to get making our spice mix. I have some Zanzibari heritage, so we like to include cloves, that's really, really important to us. And you don't need a lot of these, they're quite pungent. With your cloves, add in some coriander seeds, cumin, cinnamon sticks, cardamom, then some dried chili flakes, whole black peppercorns, and a pinch of salt. And then lastly, my faves, Omani Lumi, or dried limes if you know them. And I add in about three or four of those. Put your lid on and just blend it up until it's a really fine powder. And then once you've got it into your powder form, add it into a separate bowl. Now add in your garlic and ginger paste, vegetable oil, a small amount of vinegar, then finally some brown sugar, mix it into a paste, and now you're ready to get working on that lamb. You just wanna make some slits in it. And these slits are gonna allow the spices to go straight through to the lamb. Once you have enough slits, your hands are gonna get quite dirty for this part. We literally just wanna slap it all on, and then you need to ditch the spoon. It's gonna involve a lot of your hands. And you just kind of wanna get massaging it in there. And traditionally in Oman, what we do is it goes into this massive fire pit, which is called a tanur, and everyone from the village throws in their sack that is filled with their meat, and they put it into this tanur, and then they leave it to cook for about two days, and it has like really, really hot coals inside it. But we don't have a tanur, so we will just be working with our oven. So, for the fun part, or what I like to think is kind of fun and different, in Oman, traditionally, they use banana leaves to wrap their meat in, and then they put it inside a date sack. So while we don't have our date palm sack, we do have some banana leaves. You're gonna place your lamb in the middle of them. And then you just wanna wrap it over, trying to keep it as tight as possible. and then just start wrapping. And once you're happy with it, you can actually then be sure that none of the air is gonna come out, which means that your lamb will be able to come really tender and produce a lot of juice on the inside. Once it's completely wrapped up inside, you can either leave this in the fridge for 24 to 48 hours with the spices to kind of really intensify overnight, or you can put it straight in the oven, but it does take a long time, roughly four hours at 150 degrees. In the last hour while your shawar is cooking, you can get started on your rice. Now you can have a plain rice, but I mean, that's kind of boring. So I like to make a saffron rice for this. And a little trick that my grandmother taught me to make your saffron go further. With the saffron, add in your sugar and grind it all up. Follow this with some water and make sure to mix it well to enhance the saffron. Now leave that to sit for a little bit while we get the rice ready. So just pour in your rice. I'm using three cups of rice. So depending on the size of the cup you used, you wanna make sure that you add in the same amount of water plus one cup, always. Then add in some oil and a good amount of salt. And just as your rice is starting to boil, pour in your saffron. The lamb is ready, the rice is finally cooked through. Now all we need to do is plate it all up. Don't worry about the banana leaves coming with you. We just need that lamb on top of the rice. And you can literally just garnish it with a few other things. I love pomegranate, so they're super important for me to add on. And a bit of coriander, kind of nice to grab when you're eating the rice. And there you have it, your traditional Omani shua. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, tell all your friends and family, and if you make my Omani shua, send us in a photo.